Okay, there's a couple of new spinner designs for today. Uh, these are spinners 17 and 18 on the STLs. Um, my voice is a little off today. I have a respiratory infection and I'm trying to get this done without too much coughing. So we'll see how this goes. So we have the base sketch for number 17. We have the standard 21.9 diameter circle for the bearing placement and we have 34 millimeters for the outer rim. And then I extrude this up. And then I place a, I always forget the name of this thing, tangent plane. Uh, tangent plane is placed, as you can see right there. And that allows us to go to the next step of placing a new sketch. And I'll just hover over it. As you can see, there's simply a circle being placed. And this circle is for the quarter inch, oh, wrong button is for the quarter inch ball bearings <coughs> to be used as weight for these. These are very compact spinners for this week. Um, then I take this and do... I create a circular pattern using that extrusion and let me step forward. As you can see that's extruded all the way around the piece. Then I go in and fillet the top and bottom uh, just to give the proper distance for the depth of the bearing which is seven millimeters since this is slightly taller I believe at about eight, eight and a half millimeters. Uh, I fillet the outer edge just to make it look a little better. And then I create a new sketch which is for the caps. And I'm just going to step through these since it's difficult to talk. And I basically build the cap up. I create a hole through the center. And then I split this. And this is a new design for the cap. Um, this is a little thin, so if you do this, I wouldn't recommend putting the hole through the center but the split does make it much easier to fit in. And then I chamfer the edge so that it slips. I created a fillet on this design to match the overall design of the piece. And then everything's combined so that I can actually export it to be printed. So this is 17. 18 is basically the same. I'm not going to walk through it simply due to the difficulty in talking without coughing. Uh, the only real difference between the two designs is that I chamfered this down um, for the height of the bearing, which is the 7 millimeters, And then for the cap, I actually created the same chamfer so that it fits perfectly in here. And the overall, I believe, is off by about a half millimeter. Uh, which is just enough sticking out so that you can actually spin it on the desk and not just on your fingers. So let's have a look at the finished designs and what was printed. So here are the results of the two spinners. Um, here's a smaller version. This was printed in tea glass, so a nylon. Spins nice. It's a very compact size. And it has a fair amount of weight to it, considering the size. Uh, here's the larger one. This was printed in PLA. And as you can see, there's quite a few cracks right through the center um, from the ball bearings being placed. Uh, it spins well. It's quite a bit of gyroscopic force if it's moved. Well, I like the design of both of these, I think these need to be printed in nylon. Uh, tea glass or similar simply because it doesn't split when you put the ball bearings in. Um, there's enough give in the plastic or it just fits nicely. Everything fits very nicely together. Um, the surfaces aren't as pretty as PLA can be or 
acetone smoothed ABS but for the actual functionality I think a nylon is your best bet. So anyway, these work very well. They spin well. Uh, you can actually desk spin these. Since there is just enough offset from the surface for it to spin on the larger model. And until next time, keep designing.